buying a house or renting a house. The truth of the matter is many people every year jump on the internet and ask that exact same question, but it's actually not that easy of an answer. Why? Because home prices and rent costs go up and they actually go down. I know it sounds funny because if you looked at a long-term chart of the value of a home, it would seem like it just goes up, but inside of that upline trend are lots of ups and downs. Lots of people have lost their homes during those downs. Well, at the same side, if you're renting, you are actually find times where rent gets really expensive and then it gets less expensive. So let's talk about a couple of the factors that would cause these to happen. And then we're gonna go into the pros and cons of renting or versus buying. So first, what would actually cause rents to go up? That's super simple. It is simply the law of supply and demand. When there are fewer rental properties available in any given city, town, or in the country, and there is a lot of people looking for them, well, they're gonna obviously bid those up. Now, there are also times, like right now, what we're starting to see as rent prices are coming off of historic highs, they're actually dropping in value for a couple of different reasons. First of all, people have migrated out of big metropolitan areas like California and jam-packed themselves into different parts of the country. But also, not only has that mellowed out, but apartment complexes have been getting built around the country at record paces. And so there is more inventory coming onto the market. As inventory increases, there are only so many people looking for rentals, landlords are then forced to drop prices. Now, in the exact same scenario, when you're talking about home values, those can contract and constrict uh, as well. They could actually get tighter, which means if there's fewer homes for sale and there's still a lot of people looking to buy them, prices can go up. But then when there's fewer buyers and there's more inventory or homes on the market, they go down in value. So now let's break down the differences, the pros and cons of renting versus buying. First off, renting, you're pretty much carefree. When that toilet breaks, you simply call your landlord. Now, not every landlord's gonna get out there and just jump on the, the fix right away, or, proper, or a property management company may be a little bit slow to respond, especially if it's on the weekend. But the point being is that you don't have to run down to Home Depot and do it. So it's a really nice uh, benefit. Now, when you own a home, and the toilet breaks, well, you don't get to call anyone but yourself. And so you gotta get up, go down to the store, or you have to hire someone, pay for them to fix it. When you're renting, the, the repairs are included in the rent. The reason why is because the rental rents for a certain amount and they're not expecting you to foot any more than what you already negotiated in your lease. Now, as exciting as it is to not have to go and fix the toilet, there are some downfalls to renting. Well, let's name them. One downfall to renting is that you are subject to, once outside of your lease agreement, and you're on a month to month, you're now subject to the possibility of your landlord either raising your rent or asking you to leave because they wanna move in themselves. You also don't have the flexibility to decorate necessarily the way you want. Sure, you could put some knickknacks on the wall, but if you wanted a new paint color because you just couldn't stand the, the plain white of those walls, well, you would have to get special permission. And even if you got special permission to do it, a lot of the times landlords will say, if you wanna do it, you're gonna have to foot the cost. So at that point, you might as well own a home. So with owning a home, you obviously have the freedom to be able to do whatever you want, right? So you have to ask yourself, what is the most important thing to you? Do you wanna have the freedom to be able to do whatever you want with the property, but it's gonna come at a cost? Or do you wanna have less of a carefree lifestyle where you can come home, either know that everything's working, and if it isn't, go ahead and call your landlord, but then you don't get to participate in the benefits of owning a home. Well, what are the benefits of owning a home? Well, there is appreciation. Now, appreciation doesn't work all the time. There are, like I said earlier, on the long-term chart of home prices going up, there are those little ups and downs, those peaks and those valleys. So you can't always, figure on home appreciation happening and going on forever or ex or happening exactly like when you want it to happen. But here's the biggest thing that I think that most people mess up. They don't take into account how stable their job is and how long they want to live in one place. Humans by and large are not exactly, they, some people say they're creature habit, 
But the thing is, is that human beings do like to move. They do like change. And if you aren't going to be in the exact same place for a very long time, or you don't have a job that you think is going to be around or that you're going to be wanting to work for very long, then you may want to hold off on buying a home. Buying a home is a big commitment. Sure, if you found another job or you moved to another city, you could always rent. But depending on the price that you paid for the house or for the condominium or even an apartment, you may not be able to rent it depending on what the local market is giving up in rent. So this is what I always suggest people do. If you're going to buy a house, consider the longer term. Look five and 10 years out. If you feel that you are going to have gainful employment, you're going to really enjoy the area and you want the ability to be able to either write off the interest that you're, if you took out a mortgage, you're writing off the interest on that loan. That's good. If you want to try and wade into the real estate market and look at longer term capital gains, meaning as the property appreciates in value, you would be able to capture that when you sell it then I think that it's for you. However, if you feel that you're in a moment in life where you could leave and go away to a distant land for a new job, or you haven't settled down yet in your life and you're still wanting to experience life to its fullest, then I think that renting would be a good option. I hope this answers some questions because a lot of people ask it. And emotional, emotional decisions are not what we want when we're talking about real estate. You wanna pull back, look at the facts, weigh them all equally, and then make your move. So with that being said, let's knock this one down as done. See you guys.